So absolute advantage, economists use the term absolute advantage when comparing the productivity of one person, firm or nation to that of another. The producer that requires a smaller quantity of inputs to produce a good is said to have an absolute advantage in producing that good. Put another way, if two people or firms received the same amount of inputs, whoever could produce the most units of that good would have their absolute advantage. So absolute advantage. Um, so let's do some practice on this. So country A can produce 12 cars or eight computers. Country B can produce 15 cars or five computers. Which country has the absolute advantage in terms of cars? Country B, yeah, because they produce more cars um, than country A in this case. Country A can produce 12 cars or eight computers. Country B can produce 15 cars or five computers, which country has the absolute advantage in terms of computers. Country A, yes. Country C can produce shirts in 30 minutes or one chair in 60 minutes. Country D can produce a shirt in 45 minutes or one chair in 45 minutes. Which country has the absolute advantage in every shirts? So country C, because uh, they produce shirts quicker. So they produce a shirt in 30 minutes instead of, uh, which is quicker than the 45 minutes that country D takes. So in the first two questions, number of outputs was given. So the answer depended on who could produce the most of the desired good. The last question, however, gave the number of inputs, in this case, time, that was needed to produce one unit of the good. So the answer was the country that needed the fewest inputs the last time to produce the desired good. So production and trade, country G can produce 20 hamburgers or 80 hot dogs. Country H can produce 14 hamburgers or 28 hot dogs. So you might notice that country G has an absolute advantage of both hamburgers and hot dogs. Does this mean that country G should not trade with country H because they can already produce more by themselves? No. Both countries would be better off with trade, meaning they'll be able to consume more with than their current resources would allow. And to understand why, we must look at who has the comparative advantage. So comparative advantage, economists use the term comparative advantage when describing the opportunity cost faced by two producers. The producer who gives up less of the other goods to produce good X has the smaller opportunity cost of producing good X and is said to have a comparative advantage from producing good. So the... First step in determining who has a comparative advantage is to calculate the opportunity cost for each country with each good. So the opportunity cost means what is the cut what is the country in this case giving up in order to produce one unit of the chosen good? This can be calculated using simple algebra to see how much one unit of the desired good costs in terms of another good. So country G can produce 20 hamburgers or 80 hot dogs. Country H can produce 14 hamburgers or 28 hot dogs. What is the opportunity cost of country G to produce one hamburger? So you do the number of hot dogs divided by the number of hamburgers. So yeah, four hot dogs. So to do that, it would be, you would take, so in this case, you would take these numbers here. So you take these numbers, so you do the 80 hot dogs divided by 20 hamburgers. And that would just be four hot dogs per one hamburger opportunity cost.
but that's how you do that there. And that's uh, the opportunity cost of uh, one hamburger. So I'll put this in the chat for you. So yeah, it would cost four hot dogs for every one hamburger in this case. Yeah. So Country G can produce 20 hamburgers or 80 hot dogs. Country H can produce 14 hamburgers or 28 hot dogs. What is the opportunity cost for Country G to produce one hot dog? So yeah, one quarter hamburger. So you do the, um, you take this information again. You do 20 hamburgers divided by 80 hot dogs equals a quarter hamburger per one hot dog opportunity cost. So that's how you do that there. So Country G can produce 20 hamburgers or 80 hot dogs. Country H can produce 14 hamburgers or 28 hot dogs. What is the opportunity cost for Country H to produce one hamburger? Two hot dogs, excellent. So yeah, the uh, 28 hot dogs, about to be 14 hamburgers, equals two hot dogs per one hamburger. Opportunity cost. Yeah. So country G can produce 20 hamburgers or 80 hot dogs. Country H can produce 14 hamburgers or 28 hot dogs. What is the opportunity cost for country H to produce one hot dog? So yeah, half a hamburger. So yeah, 14, 14 hamburgers. So, sorry. So yeah, 14 hamburgers. But the 28 hot dogs equals 0 0.5 hamburgers per hot dog. So yeah, um, so yeah, for the last four questions, the opportunity cost for one hamburger was four hot dogs. The opportunity cost of one hot dog was a quarter hamburger. 
for a country G and country H, the opportunity cost of one hamburger was two hot dogs. The opportunity cost of one hot dog was a half a hamburger. So um, now you can figure out who the who has the comparative advantage now with all that information. So, so who has the lower opportunity cost for hamburgers? So country H because they only give up two hot dogs as opposed to four. So as you can see, the lower opportunity costs. So this is lower here than this. So that means that country H has the comparative advantage. So lower country H has the comparative advantage. Lower opportunity cost means comparative advantage. So lower opportunity cost means comparative advantage. And then who has lower opportunity costs for hot dogs, country G, because they only give up a quarter of a hamburger instead of half a hamburger. This means that country G has a comparative advantage in producing hot dogs. So if you remember, country G had the absolute advantage of both hamburgers and hot dogs, but it only has a comparative advantage in producing hot dogs. This highlights the point that even if a country has an absolute advantage from two goods, they can only have a comparative advantage in only one good. Country H did not have an absolute advantage in either good, but still has a comparative advantage in producing hamburgers. This is all because they have the lower opportunity cost in producing them. So this now means that each country should specialize in only producing the good for which they have a comparative advantage. All of their resources should be used to produce only that one good. Country G has a comparative advantage in hot dogs. Country H has a comparative advantage in hamburgers. After they have produced the good in which they specialize, they can then trade with each other to benefit both countries. In terms of trade, for both parties to gain from trade, price at which they trade must lie between the two opportunity costs. This means we need to compare comp opportunity costs again for either good and find a number in between both opportunity costs for the countries. As a reminder, uh, the opportunity cost there. So let's only compare the opportunity costs for hamburgers. Country G, the opportunity cost of one hamburger is four hot dogs. Country H, the opportunity cost of one hamburger is two hot dogs. What is conveniently a number between two and four? How about three? This means they should trade one hamburger for three hot dogs. Let's say the countries agree to trade one hamburger for three hot dogs. Country G specializes in hot dogs, produces 80 of them, and exports them to country H. Country H specializes in hamburgers, produces 14, and exports them to country G. The table on the next slide shows how each country benefits from trade along these terms because they're able to have more of both goods than if they try to be self-sufficient. So with trade, they would have more of both goods in this case. So country G, yes. Yeah, so, so there would be more of both goods in this case. Yeah, so country G would produce 80 hot dogs and then country H would produce 40. So um, yes, yeah, so there would be a lot more in this case, um, yeah, there'd be a lot more produced on both for both products. So Andy can produce a pillow in 15 minutes or a blanket in 20 minutes, and Barbara can produce a pillow in 20 minutes or a blanket in 30 minutes. Who has absolute advantage of making blankets? So Andy, Andy would have the absolute advantage of making blankets because it's 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes for Barbara.
Andy can produce a pillow in 15 minutes or blank in 20 minutes. And Barbara can produce a pillow in 20 minutes or blank in 30 minutes. Who has a comparative advantage of making blankets? So actually, yeah, Andy would have the comparative advantage in making blankets in this case. Yes. A country should specialize in production of the good in which they have an absolute advantage. True or false? So be false, it should be a country should specialize in production of the good in which they have a comparative advantage. But also they could have the comparative advantage and also the absolute advantage of the same good. So that could be, it could be both. So the opportunity cost for Timmy to produce one desk is four and a half chairs. The opportunity cost for Lauren to produce one desk is six chairs. Knowing this, who should specialize in producing desks? So Timmy, because he has a lower opportunity cost, so it takes him four and a half chairs to produce one desk, while Lauren, it takes six chairs for her to produce one desk. So it's a lower amount of chairs for Timmy needed. So like he only has to give up four and a half chairs to make one desk, while Lauren has to give up six chairs to produce one desk. So it would be less given up for Timmy to produce one desk. <laughs> The country produces currently produces coffee and bread. If new technology was discovered that increased the production of coffee, how would the opportunity cost of bread be affected? So it would increase because more coffee could be produced instead. So let's say it doubled the production of coffee. So instead of produce, instead of, um, so instead of making one loaf of bread, like let's say it doubled production of coffee. Let's say it took a pound of coffee to produce one loaf of bread. Now it takes two pounds of coffee lost to produce one loaf of bread it would there would be a higher opportunity cost in that case so instead of instead of making bread you could produce two pounds of coffee and that would be that would be the coffee loss you produce bread it would be um so you'd be you would give up more production of coffee to produce bread so it would increase because more coffee could be produced instead <laughs> So the opportunity cost for Timmy to produce one desk is four and a half chairs. The opportunity cost for Lauren to produce one desk is six chairs. Knowing this, who should specialize in producing desks? 